Hello again, everybody. Brett back out to do scale modeling. Another gift from to us from Hobby Boss. 48 scale new tool Chinook. I can't remember the last time we had a 48 scale new tool Chinook. New, new tool Chinook. By Beth Wilkins Scale Mates, we can find out. Anyway, excuse the glare because the plastic is on here. There are some CAD drawings. And it's going to have some photo etch and decals, of course. And a little bit about this wonderful aircraft that you still see flying around today. I saw one the other day flying into our high altitude airport. This side is going to show you a couple of paint schemes and those droopy, droopy rotors. This is not a toy. Don't treat it as a toy. This is kit number. Eight, eight, one, seven, seven, two. We are going to remove the plastic to remove the glare. And we're going to get started. Here is that beautiful box art. Here is me trying to get into this box. There we go. Okay. We've got the typical Hobby Boss advertisement. The new Chinook. German P. Panzer something. Offs A. And F-18E Super Hornet, which I will be doing a review of shortly. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sprues, PE instructions, decals. So, let's get this party started with the fuselage. Why do I keep misplacing my name? And the clear sprues are in here too. There's three of those. So, we have... Let's get in here. Get back here. We have your typical beautiful Hobby Boss plastic with some very nice rivet and recessed detail. You can tell there's going to be different versions because the other end of it is separate. There you go. Your portholes. It's got a lot of... I'm not sure what these are for. But they're there. Inside. We've got sound dampening. Diamond plated. Very nice. One ejector pin mark here. And that's all I see. One here. So, you got that beautiful texture inside. Hold the wash nice. Be able to detail it very well. The floor and the ceiling don't have any real detail. I said two ejector pin marks up front. Both sides. And again, close up look. You can see that fine rivet detail all on there. And again, show the other side. Very, very heavy sprue and sprue gates. But I don't think that'll be a problem. Next, let's find uh, there we go. the other half of the fuselage. So the tail section has got lots of rivet detail on it. It's made to slide in there, so you, if you do it right, and it's molded right, you should not have a seam line. Inside here, 
talks about the model number here. But again, great detail in here. In here. There's a couple of ejector pin marks right there and there. That's all I really see. It would impress me. Look on the bottom here. Rivet detail. And then, of course, the amazing rivet detail in both the tail sections. I'm sure if it's not in the P, it's in here. Edward or someone will be coming with vents that you can replace these with with Photo Etch. So they're open. But that is really good. Over the top, it's the same. It isn't fading out like old moldings used to when you went to the top or the bottom. I'm just right there. Doing that on the bottom, that's just that's just a step above for Hobby Boss. They're getting better and better and they're releasing new tools. Alright, let's look at the interior parts. So what we've got here is the floor and all the tie downs and that looks great. You've got the ceiling with the same texture padding and the bulkheads, the sides, more bulkheads. Uh, those look like windshield wipers and fire extinguishers and antennas and radio boxes. This side, of course, ejector pin marks, but it's the floor. What do you care? There's a little sprue cutoff point right here we're going to have to eliminate. Or else it's not going to probably sit flush. Again, on the roof, same thing. Ejector pins, but you're not going to see them. None on the back of this bulkhead. Some on the back of this bulkhead, so I'm assuming you can't see it. But, yeah, beautiful texture is on that floor and the tie downs. And then on the ceiling. And the sides. And this bulkhead. And then instrument cluster has it on there. These side panels have it on there. This bulkhead. Then there's some radio detail. And then your windshield wipers. I'm impressed so far. Here we have a I don't know, but we're going to find out. That's your wheels, I see that, and your tires. Parts of your engines. I'm guessing this goes over the top. These are part of the engine intakes. Your landing gear struts. Wheels need to be put together. All eight of them, but the detail on here is just as good this is on the fuselage. I looked at the detail. We have a detail on the engine cowlings. And then on the roof. And I'm not sure what part this is. Maybe it's the floor, maybe? The back of the that opens up. intakes. There are no ejector pin marks inside of those. You can those are landing gear struts, your tires and wheels, detail. I'm still liking what I see. <clears throat> now, if they've made the droop and the rotors, that'll be amazing. So, I think this is the top of the cab. This might be the top or the bottom of one of the spines. Engine exhaust. 
and your rotor heads, two piece. Be easy to detail up. Bunch of little parts, I have no idea what they're for. Lots of ejector pin marks in here and here, but they're going on top. This hatch has no ejector pin marks on it. So, rotor heads. Very nice. And again, more detail. There. And rivets around that hatch. And then these little parts. And like I said, which one is? So this hatch here has a really nice detail on the inside with no ejector bin marks. Still ongoing. So I found rotors. The moment of truth. Were they able to put sag in the rotors? The answer is yes. They sagged the rotors. Isn't that nice? The sponsons, I think they're called, for the side. Um, I'm thinking doors, landing gear doors. These are the other parts of the what connects to the rotor heads. But one piece of rotor blades, nice detail, nice sag. I know it's hard to tell the sponsons, but. And there's the nice detail. And again, panel line, rivets. On both. Very well done. And of course, ejector pins inside, but none on the rotor blades. And uh, the inside of these doors, here and here. No ejector pins in those either. Well, let's take a look at them one more time. They put the sag in the blades. Alright, here is one of Hobby Boss's famous extra protection because it's probably small parts. There are two sprues in here. We can carefully slice that. These matching. These are engines. They are matching. So you've got very fine detail on here. You've got matching matching sprues for the engine. So your engines, your compressor blades, so you'd have a little engine detail to work with. Make it as you will. More parts for the rotor heads. And instructions, we'll see how detailed they are. So, two of those, which I'm going to wrap back up. So I don't damage them. And I'm going to slide them back in here, so they stay safe. Now, <clears throat> three sprues of clear plastic. This one we're not going to open. Portholes, bubbles, that's all. No need to open. This one is the main canopy we will open. bag. So this has got the nose and everything. The doors are not opening but you can see you get a mask set for that. It is very very nice and clear. And the sides, the front down looking ones, they did a really good job on that. I'm liking that. Let me slide 
this back in here. It's come all the way from China. No damage. I don't want to damage it now. This one will open up because the instrument panel is in here. They have a clear instrument panel. Well, you can see it. It is raised on one side. And a couple of lights. But clear instrument panel. I'm guessing that means this decal sheet's going to have instrument decals on it. Photo etch. One sheet with all the grilling and venting I was talking about earlier. Some of it's going to have to be folded over. Rolled. And decals. Oops, cut that badly. I know Ravel made a Chinook. I think it's 48 scale. Might be 32, but I think it's 48. And it's not nearly this good. These are typical hobby bus decals. I do not see any instrument panel decals. So I guess you're over oh, there. Instrument panel decals. Walkways. And your various markings. United States Army stencils, a few other things, and that's going to lead us right into the instructions. Let me put the details back in here. I'll just riff raff. CH47A. Let's hope they do many other versions. Here, look at it since it's right here in front. Color dots. Two versions. Basic Army Olive Drab Green. There. What you color call that? And Basic Olive Drab Different Green. So, there's those color callouts. So, you got two versions. We start this instruction booklet with a sprue map, a numbered sprue map. I would find a mask set if I could for that canopy, although it'd be easy to cut out. You start the construction with fire extinguishers. Zoom out a little. Interior. Well, one part I wasn't sure about was the covering for the instrument panel. And then you're going to put all your instruments together, you're going to paint it black back, put your decals on it, and hopefully there'll be a good zoom set or, um, is it Quintana? A 3D set? Alright, you're working on the floor, you're working on the interior, there's your seats, you got two seats. There's some radio boxes on the bulkheads, putting your bulkheads and your walkway together. Here is a box that goes here for the bottom hatch. No cement it says, because it's obviously a hook of some sort. And we're going to another box. It's going to a bunch of shelves for instruments that sit right there. And here is, you can see how it's supposed to look. Grab handles for those instruments. Then you're working on each side of the fuselage. You have options, bubble windows or flat windows, flat portholes. You need to make some holes. Uh, step 16 is this part, whatever it's for. You put the tail sections on as well before you put the halves together. A bunch of PE going on back here, like I said, for the tail area. Another fire extinguisher, some venting, um, overhead instrument panel I'm guessing, and you're working on the engines, 
And these are those PE parts I said you're going to have to curl around. So a nice PE rolling tool or a good soft mat that you can roll them. Okay. Engine nacelles going on. The optional sponsons. That's not optional, that's optional. Going on. You have your down door. I'm guessing it can be open or closed. And the same thing for your other side. And here we go. That was right, that's the back door that's going to be open or closed. Your choice. One's the top part. And later on, we're getting the bottom part. You got your undercarriage going on. Right four, left four. Antennas. So I'd probably wait until it was done painting. And then your aft rear wheels. And there's that bottom door I was talking about. So you can have the ramps. These are the ramps. So you can actually stick in a 48 scale Jeep or something if you got one. And there is that top part, like I was saying, it's going across there. It'll cover that seam line. Hopefully it's flat enough that we'll make two other ones. And then you're going to be working on your rotors. Rotor heads. Put them all together. Rotor blades. And you are done. You have made a new tool, 48 scale Chinook. That is just so cool looking. And the size of it's perfect because a 35th scale, and I think there is a 35th scale by Trumpeter, will be massive. Massive. So there you have it, new tool Chinook. Can't wait for the other versions to come out. Thanks for watching. Take care. Sit your ass at the bench. Build a helicopter. Doesn't have to be this one, but why not this one? Bye for now.